Because I want to try another one out on the end of it. Works for them. No. I'll find it for you. It's not there, so let's read further back. Hang on, what's that? That's Foreman. Foreman. Somewhere near the office. That's it. That's my father. Good heavens. The one at the back looking away. Not looking to the camera. So it. And after that, he was sent out to India to market the engines. So, so what year did your father start at Merleys? Well, he was born in 1895. Right. So I would think that he probably started your apprenticeship at the age of 15, let's say. So he st did he start in 1906 then, when the factory opened? I think so, yeah. All oh, right, so, yeah. Uh, so that he'd be about 23. 20 something. 24 maybe. If he said in his mid 20s when he sent out to India. Yep. 40. Yep. He must have been fairly bright, but he must have finished his education at Stockport Tech. Right. Uh, yeah, they wouldn't break. They wouldn't break it then. So he obviously knew Charles Day then. Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a lot of paperwork of Charles Day's and some of his personal really? possessions, etc. You know what? Yeah. I try out on you. Remember the commissioner in the little one, Mick. Yeah. Uh, very broad, very rude language, shall we say, used yeah. to use. Not a lot for whatever. And he retired about 1971, 72, so I was born at the turn of the century. So he could be a young trainee at the end of the First World War. Because I think he worked all his life, apart from maybe yeah. some time of the war. And I wouldn't have got that one. Well, that was it, that yeah. Could be. It appears several occasions. It just yeah. Did he become the commissioner you know, 50 years oh, yeah. later? Yeah. It's just that build. Um, but my first real job, when I came out of my time and had a proper job, was doing torsional vibrations in the drawing office. And in those days, you had a guess at the balance weights, the flywheel inertia, and all the rest of it, the alternator inertia. And you did a trial thing, and you didn't get zero down there, so you did it again and again and again, and it was called repetitive approximations. And uh, yes, you remember that? Uh, nowadays, you press a bloody button and you've done in seconds. What's it all out? Control room in these Yep. Now, this is a super set of photographs. And I, I went home at, at night, it was done on a slide rule. And your eyes were yeah. popping out. <laughs> and as you say, now it's just. Yeah, you press a button and. Yeah. This is a super set of photographs because yeah. by accident we, we um, discovered. I wrote this paper about these engines, regarding yeah. what we didn't know until the other museum in the circuit, the one in Wales, provided us with a handbook. The handbook was two engines the heavyweight and the lightweight. Uh, what the hell is a lightweight? Everything, all the major castings are aluminium. Oh, produced at the end of the war for some other tech that needed to work to wear. Interesting. Start to look at this photograph. There's an aluminium engine that marks the testing point. That's your cast iron one. Oh, There's your aluminium one. For what? Aeroplanes, airships? No, no, for a tank that needed a lighter weight. Ah. A small high speed tank, yeah. you know, and they needed a lighter weight. Push, 